Hi dear students in this session we will discuss about balanced modulator balanced modulators are used to generate am wave that is mainly it is used to generate double side band suppressed carrier am wave so let us see see in the case of balanced modulator it is used to suppress the carrier from the am signal the input to the balanced modulator are the carrier signal and the modulating signal here it is shown that the modulating signal which is represented as af that is audio frequency that means its frequency is lesser frequency that is why it is given as af similarly there is a carrier signal and the carrier signal frequency is high that is why it is given as rf that is radio frequency and both of these signals are given to the balanced modulator as a result it will produce a double side band suppressed carrier am signal that means the carrier is suppressed at the output of the balanced modulator that means only the upper and lower side bands will be present in the signal here so this is the block diagram representation of the balanced modulator so the basic principle of operation of the balanced modulator is that when two signals at different frequencies are passed through a nonlinear resistance then the am signal is generated with suppressed carrier usually diodes junction field defect transistor that is jft and transistors that such as bjts can be used in the balanced modulator to generate the am signal To, with the suppressed carrier signal so there are different kinds of balanced modulator that is singly and doubly balanced modulator suppose any circuit that multiplies two input signals while cancelling the feed through of one of these inputs are called singly balanced modulator and if it cancels both the input are called it is a doubly balanced modulator so balanced modulator actually what is doing is that it will multiply this modulating signal with the carrier signal like a nonlinear device as a result the carrier signal is suppressed at the output so that we will get a double side band suppressed carrier signal so usually instead of this ba this balanced modulator uses nonlinear devices such as jft that is junction field affected transistor or bjt that is bipolar junction transistor or any diodes um, that is the basic constraint of this balanced modulator so that it will produce a output with a suppressed carrier so different uh, kinds of balanced modulators are there sometimes the balanced modulator may suppress any one of the input and such type of balanced modulator are singly balanced modulator sometimes this balanced modulator may suppress or cancels Uh, both of these input signals that is modulated signal and radio frequency signal uh, such type of balanced modulator is called doubly balanced modulator so let us see uh, usually used balanced modulator that is fet singly balanced modulator and the circuit diagram of the fet singly balanced modulator is here here it uses transistor t1 that is using at the input side and we are giving the modulating signal or message signal at this side and let the voltage of the modulating signal be v2 and similarly there is another transistor sorry transformer that is t2 and here we are giving the carrier signal and the voltage of the carrier signal is v1 and that means both of this act as the inputs and modulating signal and carrier signal act as the inputs so transformer t1 and t2 are called input transformer and here there is another transformer t3 so it is called output transformer it is because output is taken through the secondary of this transformer see this is the primary of this transformer and this is the secondary of this transformer and the output is taken from the secondary of the transformer t3 similarly we are giving the modulating signal or message signal at the primary of the transformer t1 and similarly we are giving the carrier signal input at the primary of the transformer t2 you can see here that both the transformer t1 and 
T3 are center tapped transformer that means the carrier signal is given at the center tap of the secondary of the transformer T1 and the center tap of the primary of the transformer T3. So carrier signal is reaching at both these sides and here there are two FETs that is FET1 and FET2 usually this act as the balanced modulator that means this FET finds the product of this input signal modulated signal with the carrier signal and produces a corresponding output and here the output is, is the current flowing through the primary of this transformer T3. Similarly there are different voltage sources for biasing purposes and here when we are giving modulating signal voltage to the primary of this transformer T1 that modulating signal voltage will be going to the gate of the FET. This is the gate terminal and this is the source terminal and this is the drain terminal. So that input voltage will go to the gate of the FET1. Similarly when we are giving V2 at the primary of the transformer T1 that will be coupled to the secondary and finally it will go to the gate of the transformer gate of the field effect transistor FET2. Here the function of FET1 and FET2 is that actually this the modulating signal it will produces this FET2 and FET1 act as the balanced main constant of the balanced modulator when the input signal is passing through the secondary of this transformer the input signal V2 when it goes through the lower portion of the secondary this will be undergoes a 180 degree phase shift so that if V2 appears at this gate then minus V2 appears at this gate this is the feature of the center trapped transformer so when we are giving a voltage V2 in the primary then same voltage appear at the upper portion that is V2 but 180 degree phase shifted voltage appear at the lower portion Similarly, here we are giving V1 at the primary of the transformer T2 and this V1 will appear at the, V1 will be going to this FET and similarly V1 is also going to this another FET but there is no phase, uh, uh, there is no phase shift for this um, uh, carrier signal. Um, uh, see, when we are applying this carrier, volt, carrier signal and this uh, carrier signal will produces a current flow through this FET and the current pr produced due to this carrier voltage will be equal in amplitude but it will be in opposite in direction as a result these ca currents will be cancelled out that means suppose ID1 is the current and ID2 is the current through this portion that means the net effect of this carrier current is cancelled out that means the carrier will, will not be there um, carrier will not be there that means the carrier is suppressed in this case since the modulating voltage is applied 180 degree out of phase it will not be cancelled out see when we are applying a voltage V1 at the gate of this FET1 V1 plus V2 appears similarly when we are applying a voltage V2 and V1 together at the gate of the FET V1 minus V2 appears that means there is a 180 phase shift for this modulating signal so when we are applying this voltage uh, here due to the property of the FET the carrier signal will be out of phase that means the corresponding current drain current produced will contain a component for the carrier signal that uh, the carrier the current due to this carrier signal will be equal in magnitude but opposite in phase so they cancel each other but in the case of modulating signal since it is applied 180 degree out of phase at the gate of the FET so the current will be added up so at the output we will not receive any carrier signal but we will receive only the upper and the lower side band so this is the working of this balanced modulator using FET so at the output we will get the DSB SC signal so next we will go to single sideband modulation SSP see in the case of 
amplitude modulated wave there will be upper side band lower side band and carrier frequencies but the main disadvantage of this am signal is that power is wasted in the transmitted signal due to the transmission of all these frequencies so transmitted signal requires twice the bandwidth of the transmitted intelligence and also very precise amplitude and phase relationship between side bands and carrier are required in the case of am wave and these disadvantages can be rem can be overcome by a system called a single side band suppressed carrier or ssb sc or we can say it as a single side band ssb transmission so in the case of ssb only one side band will be transmitted a carrier and other side band will be suppressed and when comparing to am and dsb sc signal efficiency of the ssb is high because it is transmitting only one side band so there is no wastage of power in the case of ssb so we can represent the ssb am signal in the time domain see the modulated signal is shown like this this is the audio frequency signal that means its frequency is lower and this is the double is suppose there is a carrier signal having frequency fc and the double side band full carrier system or am signal can be shown like this see you can see the envelope is same as that of the original modulated signal and in the case of single side band suppressed carrier that means the carrier and one side band will be suppressed so that the signal will be looking like this that means it contains only the one frequency component and also it does not contains carrier frequency and also it does not contains one upper side band it, it so it contains only one side band which is having a single frequencies so the ssb sc signal uh, will look like this and so we can say that in the case of ssb signal it is a single radio frequency signal that means there is only one uh, frequencies will be there and its amplitude is proportional to the amplitude of the modulating signal and its frequency varies with the frequency of the modulating signal usually we can represent the frequency spectrum of the ssb signal like this see in the case of am all the three components upper side band lower side band and carrier will be present but in the case of ssb only one side band will be present the other will be suppressed so that is shown like a dotted line actually it will not be present in the case of ssb only one side band such as fc plus fm will be there that means that represents the upper side band mm, that means in the in this case upper side band is uh, transmitted so when we are calculating the power of the ssb you can see that uh, the power of the ssb is either the power of upper side band or the power of the lower side band we have a mm, we have the equation for the upper side band power or lower side band power as m square E C square divided by H R. This is the power of the S S P. Also, by using the equation of this power, we can calculate the efficiency. That means efficiency will be equal to power of U S B divided by total transmitted power. So you will get the efficiency. So that's all about this topic. In the next session, we will discuss about the S S P generation method. Thank you.